What do you think the best thing to do is if you've been wrongly accused? Have you ever been wrongly accused of something? Maybe something big? Uh, what did you do about it? Or what do you think is the best thing to do if that happens to us? Should, should we uh, stand up for ourselves and, and, and try and give the truth over? Should we retaliate and, and fight back? Uh, should we just let it lie? What, what's the best thing to do if we're wrongly accused of something? Uh, because here in Mark chapter 15, Jesus is wrongly accused. We saw yesterday the seditious scheming of the Jewish leaders. Uh, they, they take Jesus off to Pilate, ready to accuse him of insurrection against Caesar. And so we continue in verse 2. When, when they get to Pilate, Pilate asks, Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So Pilate again asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. We're told here in Mark that the chief priests accused Jesus of many things. Uh, we have to read the other gospel accounts to see what the accusations are. But they're accusations that Jesus is the leader of an uprising against the Roman rule. Uh, he, he's a rival king against Caesar. That's what the chief priests are, are accusing Jesus of in front of Pilate. And we know it's a, a wrong accusation because all the way through Jesus has been refusing to lead any sort of insurrection. He's been trying to, to make it clear that he's not come as a political rival. No, he's here as a servant to do something quite different. Jesus is wrongly accused. But look what Jesus does as he's wrongly accused. A Pilate asks him, are you the king of the Jews? And instead of standing up for himself and saying that he's not the sort of king that, uh, that they're accusing him of, uh, that he's come to, to take his throne in a very different way, he, he, just, um, he just lets it lie. He says to, to Pilate, you have said so. And then when, uh, when the chief priests make their accusations in detail and Pilate asks for Jesus' reply, Jesus made no reply. He was silent in front of his accusers. What this does is show us that what's happening in Mark chapter 15 in Jesus' trial before Pilate is a fulfilment of Isaiah chapter 53. It says in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 that God's servant was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Jesus' refusal to give an answer, his silence, his, his showing that he is the suffering servant of Isaiah chapter 53. We'll see more as, as we work through Mark chapter 15, the implications of how Isaiah 53 is being fulfilled. But here, let's just notice the meekness of King Jesus. He's wrongly accused of the worst crime. And what's worse, he is the king of the universe. He's being mistreated by his own subjects. Yet he just lets it happen. He remains silent. Wonderful meekness. And this amazes Pilate, the person with the most authority there. His mouth is shut by Jesus' actions. He's amazed. And, and also, as well as marvelling at Jesus' meekness, we see an example of, of what we should act like as children of the King. We are also called to meekness. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. One of the ways that we will display the family likeness and be like Jesus is by being meek sometimes. When we're wrongly accused of things, because we are Jesus' followers, then we might well be called to meekness. Let me pray. Father God, we, we praise and thank you and marvel at Jesus' meekness that he would lie down and, and allow himself to be wrongly accused and sentenced to death. We see their true greatness, uh, the true king we need. And Father, we ask that you would uh, point our hearts to him and help us to always trust him. And Father, if there are times in our lives when we are called to meekness as the right response, Please would you enable us to do that by the work of your spirit in our hearts. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Good to see you. See you again tomorrow. Take care. God bless.